Welcome to our Lenten worship. We are so glad to have you join us. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of of the Lord's Prayer from the Small Catechism. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean? The good and gracious will of God is surely done without our prayer. But we ask in this prayer that it may be done also among us. When does this happen? God's will is done when he hinders and defeats every evil scheme and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful self. 
which would prevent us from keeping his name holy and would oppose the coming of his kingdom. And his will is done when he strengthens our faith and keeps us from and for as long as we live. This is his gracious good will. The light shines in the darkness, and all does not overcome it. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there any verse in the Bible more troubling than this? To pray God's will be done is an act of self-emptying. It is a rejection of self-interest and self-determination, perhaps even in some sense, of living itself. For God's will is God's, and who can know the mind of God? To surrender our will to God's is to place ourselves into the darkness of another's secret plans. To recognize the hard and troublesome, often painful experiences of life as occurring on purpose instead of being random. There are no accidents if God wills. What is, is so because he ordains or allows it. Removed is the comfort of uncertainty, the bliss of ignorance that cannot trace effect back to cause. Instead, we must acknowledge that all things happen because God wills it. So too, the comfort of nihilism is stripped away because then when something happens, we can't say that's just the way things are. No, but it happened because God willed it to happen. God stands behind all that is if he's a willing God who executes his plans through history and in our lives. To pray, to ask for, to desire God's will over our own is even more unthinkable. It is enough to cause a control freak to start shaking in their boots. To pray is to will to exercise choice, to see a vision of what could be, and to beg for its arrival. Therefore, it's an exercise in dependence, a passive response to God's economy of gift, the gift of choice. To pray is always to choose to pray. But in this case, the very will that prays undermines its own agency. We pray against ourselves and our own autonomy. It's like a prisoner who locked in a cell and desperate to be free asks for a key only so that he can give it back to his jailer. Why then ask at all? In short, what reason is there to pray, thy will be done? And can we justify such a prayer? How can we dare? The reason to pray is simple, but profound. Creatures, you and I, are created to serve God and to worship him. Because we are sinners, we desire our own wills. But God's act of creation was an act of self-emptying. In creating, God spread out his triune love into the creation, 
Just as he gave us his son, he gave us his image also. To worship and serve him is just an old way of saying that we must be properly aligned and balanced concerning God and creation. That is, to be in the right, to be in bliss, to make no room for pain, tears, and rebellion, things must be in proper relationship to flourish. When this perfect harmony arrives in the promised kingdom of God, even our prayers will fall away. Like when the left tugging of a tire disappears once the tires are aligned. That is because prayers spring from the helplessness and the distance of God's people to the object of their desire. The hypothetical person who is in perfect harmony with God and his creation lacks nothing. There are no needs or wants. This is what we pray in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But sinners have many needs and many wants. Some of these needs are good and some are not. Sadly, we can't always tell the difference. Because of sin, our will is too often contrary to God's will. It is the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh that lead us to rebel against God's will. There are strong forces that we cannot overcome by our own willpower and strength. Therefore, when we pray, thy will be done, we're asking God to do for us what we know that we cannot, and in fact, will not do for ourselves. We are asking, Lord, take the pain away. Align me and the world with you. Bring balance to the scales of injustice. Set right all the wrongs in creation. Give hope, create, and sustain life. Defeat death and the devil because this is just all too much for me. Show me your goodness, O oh Lord. And we can justify such a prayer. We can dare it. We begin to see that if we are a prisoner stuck in a cell, it does no good to ask for a key. We may unlock the door, but the jailer is still there to ensure that we can't get out. Or if we were to escape, the escape itself is a crime and we would be forever haunted and fated to return. What we need is the will of a judge, a verdict to set us free from our prison. And this is exactly what we have in Christ Jesus. He is the judge who declares us not guilty of all charges. But not in the usual way. This is a judge who declares that he himself is guilty of our crimes. And he suffers the punishment in our place on the cross. This is his act of self-emptying himself for us. Christ died, descended into hell, and on the third day, his father raised him from the dead. And this was God's will in order to save you now in the waters of your baptism. In your baptism, you are forgiven all your sin, delivered from death and the devil, and given everlasting salvation. God's will is always for your benefit, to gather you into his tender care and to keep you forever in his kingdom. Our Lord will continue to strengthen you in your faith 
and keep you firmly in his word as long as you live until once and for all he takes you to himself forever. Indeed, this is his good and gracious will for you. Amen. We'll have now a slight pause as our organist comes back down, uh, but I'll issue an invitation. If any of you think that ringing the bells sounds like fun, uh, we are in need of bell ringers, and uh, Kristen can hook you up with that. Time. 
God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ has made you free. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is The Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is on page 771 of the With One Voice hymnal. Mm-hmm.